This is the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, the northwesternmost part of China, covering 1.6 million square kilometers and bordering eight other countries, including India, Afghanistan, and Russia. When many people think of China, they think of an homogenous nation with one group of people, the Chinese. But this is far from accurate. China is home to 56 ethnic groups, many of whom have their own languages, religions, cultures, and beliefs. One of those groups is, of course, the Uyghurs, making up the largest group of the region, around 12 million of Xinjiang's population of 25 million. Xinjiang was renamed the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region way back in 1955 as a way to give the Uyghur people more control over their own governance. But many parts of the region were besieged by poverty for much of that time, in large part due to its dry climate, landlocked status, and geographical remoteness. That would begin to change with the introduction of two major initiatives, China's Poverty Alleviation Drive and the Belt and Road Initiative. China's government is acutely aware that unrest in the region, which led to hundreds of terrorist attacks in Xinjiang, around China and around the world, was in part caused by quality of life issues. Huge effort was put into reducing poverty and providing employment, not just there, but all over China, thus markedly improving people's livelihoods in Xinjiang and therefore their overall satisfaction. The Belt and Road Initiative, launched by the Chinese government in 2013, teams up with dozens and dozens of countries to provide funds for infrastructural development around the world, but mainly focuses on the area of the old Silk Road, which, you guessed it, passes directly through Xinjiang. In fact, Xinjiang's ancient city of Kashgar is famous for being an important point on the ancient Silk Road. The Belt and Road Initiative has so far teamed China with 138 other countries to build many important infrastructure projects designed to make this entire part of the world more prosperous and much better linked, including the recent China to Laos high-speed railway, the first of its kind in a country that was bombed on average every eight minutes, 24 hours a day by the United States between 1964 and 1973. The success of the Belt and Road Initiative has, by many accounts, boosted China's importance in the global community hugely, all without involvement from the world's so-called policeman, the United States, who refused to be part of the project. Many see it as inevitable that China will soon overtake the US as the world's largest economy, a fact that Washington is extremely uncomfortable with. That's where Xinjiang comes back into the picture. Owing to the great ethnic diversity in Xinjiang, as well as its history of being somewhat underdeveloped, the US sees the region as a weak spot, somewhere it can aim its efforts to break China apart from the inside out. What many in the West fail to realize is the sheer extent of terrorist attacks perpetrated by Xinjiang separatists that led to China cracking down hard in the region to begin with. There is no doubting that security in the region has been stepped up massively since around 2017, which has led to extremist attacks dropping to zero. Many in the West don't realise that so many violent attacks took place there in the first place, in the name of religious extremism, because unlike the West, China's never provided wall-to-wall -wall media coverage of terrorism, like Western media does. This is because Beijing knows that such media coverage is exactly what extremists and terrorists want. This point has worked against China in some ways, because many Western audiences have no idea that such attacks occurred so frequently to begin with, leading many outside China to believe that increased security in the region is arbitrary and without basis. The US wants to tap in on that negative energy and stoke tensions in the region in order to put the Belt and Road Initiative and China's success in general in danger. That's why Washington have now placed a ban on the import of goods from Xinjiang, with the spurious claim that Uyghurs are being forced to work as slaves. The prior claim was genocide, but without a shred of evidence, they were forced to downscale to claims of cultural genocide. Instead of providing evidence, which they of course cannot, the US is demanding that companies operating in Xinjiang do what should never be expected under the rule of law, to prove they are innocent. Of course, since it's hard to prove a negative, the US hopes to grab Xinjiang industry in a stranglehold, 
stuck in hard-earned gains and prosperity away from the Wigger people in the hope that it will lead back to unrest, violence and terrorism. If they can succeed in bringing Xinjiang to a state of constant violence and death, they hope to damage the entire Belt and Road Initiative and bring China back from prosperity. By demanding Xinjiang companies prove they don't use slave labour, Biden is asserting that, by default, every job in the region uses slaves, namely Uyghur people. He knows that's not true. In fact, there is one way to show you that he's 100% lying about slave labour in the region. On Christmas Day 2020, the first McDonald's restaurant opened in Xinjiang. The region also has KFC, John Deere, Tesla, and many other US brands operating there. So why isn't Biden demanding that US companies be the first to prove they're not using slave labour? Because he knows they're not, and he knows that if US companies like McDonald's were forced to provide evidence, then other Xinjiang companies would be able to follow suit and do so in the exact same way, effectively removing sanctions on exports to the US. That would be too easy. The aim of these sanctions are, like all other US sanctions, nothing at all to do with human rights, as is always claimed. The aim is to hurt the people of Xinjiang in order to create violence and unrest, thereby effectively slowing down the Belt and Road Initiative and China's steady rise. While Western media and governments pretend that they care deeply about the Uyghur people, about human rights and human happiness, their actual aim is to hurt them as much as possible. Make no mistake, the Uyghur people are mere pawns for Western elites, and once they've served their purpose, they'll be discarded and left to rot just like the people of Afghanistan. See you guys next time.